What's going on guys? I fix shit in your face. Don't forget, I make all these videos for you guys. They're not for me, so show a little support, drop a subscription, push the notification bell. I make this type of content all the time showing you guys how to fix scooters. I told you next time uh, I had to install another brake master cylinder. Now that I've showed you how to adjust the drum brakes, we're going to go ahead and install a new brake master cylinder for the rear brakes on the blue uh, trike over there. Um, how do I put this? So this normally requires two people when you have to work on the rear brakes. The front brakes can be worked on by a single individual, but unfortunately the rear brakes, because normally the rear brake is located on the right side of the scooter and the handle is located on the left side of the scooter, it's kind of hard to squeeze it to do the, the bleeding process. So when I actually get to the bleeding of the brakes process and I show you guys how to do that, uh, it's gonna require another person. Now when it's the front brakes, normally you can do both front brakes yourself with an eight millimeter wrench, but eight or 10 millimeter, I forget which one it is. It's one of those. Um, but so let's get to the installation part of this first, and then I'll walk you through how to bleed this properly. This one specifies that it takes uh, DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid, and luckily I have a whole bunch of that handy. So let's get underway. We're gonna be installing this on the left side of the scooter. Let's get kicked off, see you guys in a sec. Alrighty guys, sorry this is the best angle I could put you guys at so you can see here. And actually, maybe I'll angle this a little bit further that way. There we go. Um, so let's talk about some tools you're going to need. Um, you're going to need a nice little 8 wrench. Um, I have box and I have regular. Um, that These are pretty standard scooter size uh, to take these bolts out. Uh, for the handlebars is going to be 8 millimeter. This is also uh, the same wrench that you'll be using on the bleeder valve on the rear caliper and the front caliper. Most of your scooters are going to take eight millimeter uh, for the nipple or bleeder valve every guys, but we'll get into that when the time comes. So don't, don't worry about this too much yet. Um, you're going to need a 12 and that 12 is going to cover this. This is either going to be a 12, a 14 or a 10. That's normally scooter sizes 12, 14 or 10 on um, this one that I ordered for 50 CC through 150 CC. Uh, this one ended up being a 12 and that's going to be how we're going to put on the line. We'll talk about that in a second here. Um, so eight millimeter, 12. And, uh, of course, I'm somebody who likes to do things a little faster, so I have an electric impact wrench and 3H driver um, for reverse and forward. But it also doubles as a standard, as a standard wrench if I want to, or a standard uh, ratchet if I want to do it as a standard ratchet. I can do that, but I prefer to speed up the process. So if you guys have standard tools and you kind of have a guess as to how long this is going to take you versus how long it's going to take me, but it is what it is. I work on enough stuff that I know that electric tools are your best friend. You can pick one of these up. I've had this one for six months now it's worked perfect for everything i've ever done with it um this is about 38 dollars on ebay came with two batteries and it works great i have done a ton of jobs with this not just scooters but my car work as well so if you guys want one of these i'll see if i can find a decent priced one put it in the description below um other than that let's get kicked off here so first thing we're going to do is check our safety switches which is right here if you guys can see that that's our safety switches and don't really know which one goes on what side. I'm gonna take a shot in the dark here because it doesn't have a negative or a positive. I'm gonna say green is probably, not that it matters. I think you could have them backwards and it still wouldn't matter as long as it completes the circuit. I don't think it really matters, but we can check that. And the way that you check that is you just plug them in. So we have our safeties right here. I'm gonna plug one into the outside and one to the inside like that. And then we'll see if when I activate this, if the scooter starts, and that's how you can tell which uh, easy way, if it's gonna be reverse polarity, not, doesn't matter. I've got green right now on the outside because I'll be installing the handle this way. So let's turn the scooter on. I will activate the handle like this. I can hear the safety switch has engaged. Let's see if we can start it. So there you go, the starter turned over. So I can actually reverse those and we'll see if we can do it forwards or backwards or if it just cares about completing the circuit. I'm gonna make a bet that it probably only cares about completing the circuit. So I don't think it really matters which way you have these, but that's why we test these things. I haven't been shocked yet. So I am installing them backwards now to what I think they should be. Just to check a theory here. So now they're both plugged in backwards and I'm gonna activate it again. Doesn't matter which way you have them as long as they're plugged in apparently. So there you go. That's future reference for you guys. So I'll put these back to how they work because this is how it looks like they should go just like that. That's where they seem to sit comfortable. So we'll go ahead and plug those back in the way that they look like they were supposed to go on there. Like so. 
So now both safety switches have been set up on the other one and this one. I also put a new master cylinder on here. So this scooter is getting basically two brand new master cylinders on it, one for the rear brakes, one for the front brakes. So we'll go ahead and turn the key off here. I'm going to loosen these real fast with my impact to speed up my job and make this a little bit easier for you guys too. And we can really speed things up. So now all I'm gonna do is push that on here and straighten this out so you guys can see what's going on here maybe all i'm doing is plugging this into there and then tightening it down with both bolts and then i'll move the camera closer so you guys can have a better angle to see so let me just get these in real fast here if i can there we go that one was kind of being a pain in my butt so we're going to see where this thing sits comfortably at and before we put these too tight going to turn my ratchet around. Before we put these too tight, I'm going to plug the line in. Let me reverse this a little bit here. Don't want to go too fast. We just want it to hold tight and then there we go. We'll figure out where the best spot is for that. So let me move the camera. And I'll show you guys what we got going on here. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the show. So I have this angled to where this hopefully is at its flattest point that I can possibly get it. I've tilted this down now. Uh, so this is hopefully at its flattest point. And now what we're gonna do is back this out. And there are two washers on here. You're gonna need to be mindful of those washers. You don't wanna lose them. So one washer is gonna stay on the inside and you're gonna grab this line and you're gonna put that through there. And then the second washer is gonna go right there. And then we're gonna take this, we're gonna angle it, and we're just gonna put this in nice and smoothly like so. All right, so now I'm gonna change my ratchet over from my eight millimeter socket to my deep socket, which is a 12. I'm gonna put that right on there. And now I'm just gonna use my hand pressure to tighten this. I don't want to use the actual electric part to do this because I want to make sure that I'm not cranking down too much on it or stripping it. So I'm going until it's decently tight with a good amount of pressure. That will ensure a good seal and that should be it. Now I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver. We're going to take this top off and we're going to put some DOT4 brake fluid in there. So I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty, welcome back. I've got some Castrol uh, DOT brake Fluid four, and the first thing we're going to do is back these out on the top. Make sure that you get a screwdriver that fits this perfectly. If you don't, you will risk stripping these, and there's no way to undo this without getting new screws or a new master cylinder. So make sure that you have a screwdriver that fits very well inside here. Okay. So the hope is that when I put this in here, and be careful because there's a rubber pad on the bottom of this. This is what's going to actually create the pressure. Once you start to pressurize that cylinder, you can see that rubber pad inside there. That's actually going to be what's going to create the pressure. So once you put that down back on there with flesh, fresh fluid in there, right? That's what's going to seal it. So what I'm going to do is top this off as high as I can, which is right there. And the hope is that I can actually just pressurize this and there won't be much air in the line. If it builds up pressure easily, that's a big plus for us because then I don't have to do too much bleeding at all. We've really simplified our work, if that makes any sense to you guys. So what I'm gonna do is tighten this down now until we have a good seal. I'm not gonna crush this very hard. I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and tight on both sides equal tightness and then we'll squeeze it we'll start squeezing the handle to see if we get any kind of pressure I want to make sure I have a good seal but not overly tightened that's about comfortable right there so I'm gonna do is prime this alright so I'm gonna lift the camera here show you guys what I got going on we're gonna prime this brake lever and see if I start getting pressure it's gonna take a second hopefully we get pressure Prime this a good few times, do this for a little bit, and hopefully we get some 
brake pressure buildup going on. Let's go check the rear caliper now. Let's see if it's uh, got any brakes in the line or anything. Everything looks normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and loose that, loosen that bleeder valve and then we're gonna give it a squeeze and see if we get any pressure coming out of it. So let me change the placement of the camera. So, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is the rear brake caliper. And this right here is the bleeder. That's what I'm gonna be putting my eight mil on. We're gonna see if we can break this free so that we can bleed this. Oh boy, this is really gonna be locked in there, I think. All right, there's one way. Now that I've got it tightened a little bit, let's see if we can loosen her. I want to go tight first, then loose. This is a real pain in the butt to have to do this at this kind of angle. They've got a lot of little brake lines and brackets. This might actually be easier to do with my impact wrench. I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to have to here. Let me put this in reverse and see if I can fit this in here. Oh boy, that's, yeah, that's going to be a tight fit. All right. Well, let me get my ratchet. Instead, we'll get a small ratchet and see what we can do here. All right, it would appear that I have managed to get it loose. Anyways, so there's that. Now we're gonna pump it. There we go, I see brake fluid coming out now. You can see it dripping down there. It's actually going down there. All right, so. That's a plus, we have brake fluid getting back there. Oh boy, all right. Well, my roommate's a little busy, so I'm gonna have to try to do this leaning all the way over the scooter with one arm all the way back to grab the brakes, upside down, and the other hand over here to loosen this. This is gonna be fun. All right, so to bleed it, I'm gonna squeeze the brake handle, I'm squeezing it right now, and then I'm gonna break this loose. I'm gonna let all the extra fluid I can out there we go, I see it come out. When it stops dripping, I keep holding the brake. I do not let go of the brake and then I tighten this back down, tight. And then I let go of the brake, I squeeze it again, and then I loosen this and keep holding the brake while you loosen. There we go, I see a bunch of brake fluid come out. What we're trying to do is get the air out of the lines. So I'm still holding the brake, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it into place again. There we go, I'm going to release the brake, I'm going to squeeze it again. I'm going to break this loose, oh boy. <laughs> this is harder than we thought. Right. Oh boy. This is why it's nice to have two people when you're doing the rear brakes. It really is. It is a godsend to have another person assisting you. Still holding the brake while I'm doing all this wonderful craziness and uh, I don't see any air bubbles coming out so that's a plus so let's go ahead and crack this down here and then I'm gonna squeeze the brake line a few times uh, all right let me squeeze this see if we got any pressure starting to build up all right so now that we got all the air bubbles out of the line that did work by the way I now have brake pressure. So when I roll this, uh, brakes, as you can see, they are engaging. So now I've got front and I've got rear brakes. And that is how you bleed. I know that was the worst possible way to show you guys how to bleed it by yourself. That was quite a struggle, but yeah. So I technically had to reach up here, lean all the way over the scooter down to that side with a wrench and do that side. Now the front's obviously easier because the handle's right there and you could just reach around the front and do it as necessary. But I do have brakes now. They are both working perfectly well. And uh, I'm gonna tighten that, I'm gonna tighten that reservoir down just to make sure we're not getting any extra leaking. And that is how you bleed and install a master cylinder. This would actually apply to motorcycles too. So I've got plenty of brake pressure now. 
it is stopping where it should i'm applying it nice and hard the more i pump this and ride it the better they will get and if i still notice that it's a little spongy i can do the bleeding process over again to make sure there's no air in the lines so all you do to bleed is squeeze and then as soon as you crack the valve you'll feel the handle compress all the way down and then you tighten it again and then you release and then you pump it to see what kind of pressure you got until the sponginess goes away right now i've got good solid brake pressure so i'm not stressing anything so now we have two master cylinders and the fun thing about this one i installed this with a parking brake for this reason so now i can do that and it sets the parking brake before this did not have a parking brake but now i gotta pull pretty hard Arrgh! to get this to move or roll. So the more I obviously, like I said, I still have a little bit more work to go to get the full pressure of the brakes. This thing's been sitting a long time, but um, as of right now, I have brakes. I'm gonna bleed that line one more time before we crack it loose, get rid of any kind of extra sponginess. And I think I have to do this and then squeeze the brake and that should reset just like that, beautiful. So I have a parking brake now. So now this side has a parking brake and I have the release for the tilt functionality. And now we have a thousand dollar scooter ready for a new owner. They can choose whatever mirrors they want to put on it themselves. She's ready to rip tater chip. That's how it's done. I fix shit in your face. Catch you guys later, man. Toodles.